right. So, uh, first video for this channel. Um, the idea that I have for this is that, like, somehow I'll be able to uh, take someone who doesn't know anything about computers, really, but wants to learn about them a little bit. Um, and just wants to have a, you know, a, a better understanding of how their computer works. Um, and all of the cool things that you can do with your computer. Um, <clears throat> and, you know, eventually at some point, um, we'll have, like, you know, uh, the ability to create our own applications. Um, and, you know, do a little bit of software development. Um, <clears throat> I'm gonna be focusing on this from the perspective of a little bit lower level than maybe the average user thinks about a computer on. Um, so we're gonna be working kind of closely with the operating system. Um, and we're gonna install OpenBSD. Um, there are two reasons for that. First, mainly, that's what I use. That's what I've learned how to do most system administration tasks on. That's the operating system that I've like read the most source code for. Uh, and the second reason, which is kind of related to the first, is that I just like it. Um, <clears throat> and uh, you can do pretty much everything that you want to do on OpenBSD. It is a... Um, developer operating system. Um, they're not, they do not restrict you in any way from doing what you want to do with your computer. Um, <clears throat> apart from like not having Bluetooth support and uh, not having excellent wireless support, um, Right, there is Wi-Fi support. You can use Wi-Fi, um, but it's not like as ubiquitous as it is on other operating systems. Um, you can do everything that you want to do on OpenBSD, um, and I feel like you're going to learn a lot more doing it on OpenBSD than you would on any other operating system, including Linux. So with that out of the way. Um, Today, I just want to try and get uh, OpenBSD installed on a laptop that I have sitting around. It wasn't sitting around. It was, like, running my email. It was my email server before, but now it's just sitting around because I made it that way. Uh, <laughs> and, yeah, we're going to try to install from Windows... Uh, first, and then um, I think about a Linux laptop lying around, so I can show you how to get a USB drive um, off of a Linux operating system, and then if I can convince someone to let me borrow their Mac, um, I'll try and show uh, show you how to get it uh, get a USB install disk made from Mac. So. With that said, pretty much any USB disk will work. Um, this one is like 16 gigs, but I think even like a one gig will work. So, yeah. Um, I'll see you on the screencast with Windows. All right. Um, so, uh, the first thing that we're going to want to do to, uh, install, um, get a USB install disk, uh, if we're running Windows right now, is go to rufus.ie, um, and just click on this, uh, rufus.317, uh, that takes one second to download, uh, and then go to www.openbsd.org, and, uh, click on download and um, <clears throat> you 
can really click on either install70.img or um, miniroot70.img um, and I don't know how to check this on oh, okay on Windows you just go to, to settings um, I guess and uh, <clears throat> every like machine um, except like the newer uh, MacBooks um, and like some really old MacBooks um, are either AMD 64 or i386. Uh, and so what did this say? Um, settings and windows. Okay. Yeah. But like, um, it's probably under system. So yeah, about, I mean, I know that this is a, a 64 bit machine, but I just want to like, show you um yeah 64 bit operating system uh so almost every computer if you've bought it in the last 10 years is going to be AMD 64 uh that's the architecture that you're going to want to download um you can do either AMD 64 install uh 70 or AMD 64 mini root 70 uh the only difference is that this includes like all of the file sets. So it's essentially all of OpenBSD. Um, <clears throat> this uh, just downloads um, a small installer and then it pulls the rest of the stuff down over the network. So you will need to have um, an Ethernet connection, um, most likely. Uh, if you want to do the mini root version, um, the laptop that I'm installing this to though, is actually so old. It's 2008 is when it came out, uh, that I'm going to need to download this I386 mini root. It does have an ethernet connection though. So I don't have to, uh, worry about like pulling stuff down over the network. Um, yeah. And then if you just go to open file on Rufus, um, Windows will ask you, can this device make changes? Take your USB drive, which if you're doing the mini root version, this thing, I don't think you can get a USB drive that's not big enough for it, honestly. And uh, you want to make sure that you have everything <clears throat> off of there or backed up because this will overwrite everything. Um, and then come over here and hit select. Uh, hit that mini root file that you just downloaded. And uh, then hit start. And it's going to warn you that it's going to destroy everything on the drive. And then wait. Uh, it really doesn't take very long. Um, so, yeah, if you don't have Ethernet... Um, you should download, uh, the install 70, um, and then I'll talk about like getting Wi-Fi set up, uh, in a separate video. But for now, I'm just going to assume that you have, um, the, that you have an ethernet connection to install. Um, I've done this before without an ethernet connection. Actually, it was like the first time that I did it. Um, <laughs> because I was like uh, paying my like upstairs neighbors uh, for part of their Wi-Fi. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, uh, don't do that. Uh, just, you know, if you've got your own like Ethernet or go to like the library and just take an Ethernet cord or just unplug one of their computers and plug in yours, you probably do that if you have a laptop. But anyway, uh, that's it. Um, now we've got our uh, USB install drive, and uh, so next step, um, I'll go through how to do this on like Mac, Linux, and then we'll uh, check out how to get everything going uh, on the actual install. Okay, 
So, uh, similar situation on Linux. Um, we're going to go to www.openbsd.org. And um, I'll download the i386 uh, version of Miniroot 70. Um, and let's save it. Uh, and you can see it's already been saved. Um, and then if we go to a, a terminal, um, you can see um, if you type D message pipe tail, um, what you want to do essentially is uh, type that once before you've inserted your USB drive and then uh, insert your USB drive, type it one more time, and you'll see that uh, SDB is the device uh, that we're going to be uh, writing to because that's the one that got attached most recently. Uh, the reason why it says SDB for OpenBSD there at the bottom is uh, because there's already the OpenBSD installer on here. I'm just using the same one for, for the Windows version and Linux and Mac. So um, I am testing that they work uh, in between shots, but uh, I, I'm not going to use a different flash drive for all of them. Uh, and then what you're going to want to do is uh, sudo dd and uh, if, which stands for uh, input file. And then um, you can type um, home downloads and then uh, miniroot70.img. Um, you can hit tab completion. I'm sure anyone who's using Linux knows all this. Um, and then of output file uh, equals uh, dev slash SD uh, B, whatever the you know thing is that you're using there. And then uh, I'm going to use uh, block size equals 1M. And uh, enter your password. And uh, it's done, right? Like, doesn't uh, doesn't take a ton of time. Um, so yeah. Um, then just for uh, safe measure, hit sync. Type sync, um, and then you can remove that flash drive. And uh, yeah, that is it for uh, for Linux. And it's going to be a pretty similar situation on Mac if I can ever find one. It's really just figuring out what the name of your USB disk is. Uh, we're still going to use DD, um, so yeah. All right, so um, let's look at uh, trying to get um, this uh, boot USB drive for OpenBSD using a Mac. Uh, it's almost the exact same as you would do with Linux. Um, but there's this uh, guide that I will uh, try to put a link for in the description. Um, and you just like start at step five. You don't really need to do, okay, so you do need to download your file, open a terminal, um, but you don't need to do like steps three and four. Step four isn't even really a step. But <clears throat> yeah, you download that mini root, um, you run disk util list, insert your boot drive, run it again to figure out uh, like if you're if it's disk two or disk three, whatever. Um, and then I didn't mention this on uh, I didn't mention this on the um, Linux video, but there so like okay. There's a couple like concepts that you have to understand uh, about sort of like you know an overview of what we're doing here, if you will. What what do all of these commands mean? So <clears throat> I skipped over this because I didn't think that it would happen, and it didn't happen when I was doing uh, making the USB drive on Linux. Um, but essentially, like a USB drive um, is just sort of like as well as all. Um, 
hard drives, permanent storage, uh, are presented to the computer in terms of like just like a linear blocks of data, usually 512 bytes, almost always. So like the computer can go get 512 bytes from a disk and those uh, sectors as they're called are on all modern disks uh, you can just say like I want the first one or the second or the third or the billionth or whatever um, within that like linear address space you can create uh, partitions and there's a little table uh, towards the front of the disk um, that you know says where those divisions are and they're just logical divisions there's nothing like physical on the disk that makes that division there it's just that you have a little table at the front of the disk that says where all of the you know partitions are um, there's a couple different standards for where exactly that table is supposed to be. Um, the classic one is, the old school one is MBR, which stands for Master Boot Record, um, because um, there will be a little bit of like code at the very beginning of the disk that helps the computer boot. And that table of partitions will have on it um, like one of the partitions that is supposed to be bootable, right? So it'll say like, hey, you know, this partition is going to have the code that will help like bring the whole system, get the whole system up and running. Um, so... There's also uh, GPT, which I think stands for like Global Partitioning Table. Um, <clears throat> if you're like, and you can use either one, right? Like nothing's stopping you from writing whatever you want to a disk. Um, so like anyway, um, if one of your partition, and like, you know, within each partition, there's a file system uh, which is just a system for storing files right um, and you need to have software uh, like put that file system uh, somewhere um, in sort of like an abstract file system tree right so you're used to having like you know, some folder um, here, um, right? So like, if I, you know, am in a certain folder, home slash slash home slash me, um, there might be like a bunch of other stuff in that folder. And then within that folder, there's a downloads folder, right? And within the downloads folder, there can be more folders. Um, you need to have a place on your like file system where that uh, file gets attached to, and that's called mounting. Um, so, like, I ha actually have um, an empty folder in my home directory that I use to mount stuff. If I plug in a drive that I want to access, I mount it at the mount directory. Um, so all that is to say is that like you could have um, you could have your system like when a USB drive gets plugged in it will read that little table at the front and then look at all of the partitions that that USB drive says that it has um, and any file system types that it recognizes, it might automatically put them somewhere in your file system, right? Um, OpenBSD doesn't do that, but a lot of other operating systems do. Um, 
it can be a security concern when you have USB drives just automatically getting mounted. Um, whether or not that's worth not having them auto automatically mounted is another question entirely. Um, but usually you can't DD a disk if one of the partitions on it has been mounted, right? So this command is set to unmount every partition on the disk, right? So if I'm not mistaken, there's like, this refers to the whole disk, disk two or whatever. Um, but then after disk two, there's usually something that distinguishes which partition you're on, right? So like on Linux, you can have like SDB was the whole disk. And then within the disk, there will be certain partitions, right? So like SDB zero is the first partition. SDB one is the second partition, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so yeah, um, all that is to say is that there's a chance that when you do that Linux install, your DD command won't work because something's been mounted. So what do you do to unmount it? You just, the Linux version is sudo umount and then the name of the partition. So slash dev slash sdb and then some number, right? Uh, so in the Linux example, there was a, an open BSD partition on the fourth partition. So I guess maybe they do start at one, not zero in Linux. I can't remember, honestly. It's been so long since I've daily driven Linux for more than like a couple weeks. Um, <laughs> so I ran Arch for like, I don't know, three or four weeks, uh, maybe like a year ago-ish, 10 months ago. Um, <laughs> but yeah, um, so yeah, you might have to unmount on Linux too. Um, this is just sort of like a fail safe for um, making sure that you're, you know, unmounting uh, the disk before you run this DD command. And then, yeah, uh, I didn't mention this on the Linux video, but on the Linux video, I used a capital M here. Um, essentially, uh, if you're on Linux, try capital M first. If it gives you an error or something, um, try a lowercase m. If you're on a Mac, try lowercase first. If that gives you an error, try the big M. Um, and then uh, once that's done, eject it. And uh, using this command, um, sync would probably also work like we did with Linux. Um, but yeah. That's it, I think. Um, hopefully, uh, some of that like explanation of like what all like that mounting hoopla is about. <laughs> hoopla, that's a funny word. Uh, <laughs> anyway, um, yeah, like I'm planning on going over sort of like what all of these commands mean um, for people who are just you know getting into this. So uh, yeah, let me know in the comments if you have any questions. Um, I'm gonna cut the video here because um, I feel like it's gotten long enough and I wanna have a separate video just focusing on the uh, like actual install. Once you have the USB disk uh, that you can boot from, what do we do during install? Um, so yeah. Um, let me know if you have any questions. Um, if you uh, want to like the video, uh, I'm not gonna stop you. If you wanna subscribe, um, I'll only put up a small amount of resistance, I guess. Uh, <laughs> anyway, uh, yeah, thanks for watching. And uh, yeah, have a good one. Peace.